Welcome everyone. We're going to have a look at how to do the PET, the practical assessment task for computer applications technology in Matric. So I'll take you through the PET guidelines and I think I'll only update this once the guidelines changes significantly again. So I'm making this specifically that it works for any year. I'll direct you to another video regarding the topic specifically for the current year. All right, so just to motivate you a little bit, I just want to show you the power of the pet, okay? Um, so let's look at three scenarios, a, a negative one and two positive ones. So these are scenarios that I've literally seen in my own class. So I've had someone with a year mark of 80%. Now a year mark is um, the mark that you get throughout the year on all of your assessments. Um, they count towards a final mark that we send towards the Department of Education. So that's your term one tests, um, your term two exams, and your term three exams, um, and uh, tests as well in some of the years, depending on which year you're working in. Um, and then let's say in the practical final, that person worked very hard and they scored about an 85. Obviously, I wouldn't know how much they actually scored, but I'm guessing this over here. Theory is usually still a little bit of a problem, but this person really put in everything and they got a final mark for, of theory for 80%. Now, if the pet didn't actually count anything, they would have actually reached their 80. But I've had students where they just decided they didn't like doing the pet and they didn't actually put in enough effort and they actually only scored a 60% on the pet. And this has cost them their distinction. So please don't let that be you. Okay, let's look at a positive example or two. So I've had students where this actually helps them achieve their distinction and helps them pass. So um, let's say uh, you were a student who got, um, let's say about 30% for your year mark. So it wasn't going that well. Um, we're looking at about 45 for your practical final. You managed to really put in everything. Um, the theory still didn't go that well, 30% for the final. Um, so at the moment, you're sitting with a final mark of 35%. So um, that's okay, but you want to at least have 40% um, to be safe. And 50% is ideal so that you can actually have university exemption. So if you manage to do like a 60 or a 70% on your path, 60 brings you to 40, 70 brings you to 44. So do you see how much of an impact the pact can actually make? Um, let's look at another example. So um, let's say you are like 65% during your year. You really put in everything for your practical final and your theory final. Um, you manage to get about 60 and your pet, then you really, really put in absolutely everything and you manage to score 90%. And that makes a whole um, that makes a whole simple difference. Okay, so most of the time, most of my students I've seen um, manages to increase their symbol by one symbol just by putting in a lot of effort in their pet. So please, um, please make use of that and put in everything you can. All right, I'm going to put a link in um, to, to the topic of this year. Uh, video. I know the video is a bit long, but it's really worth it to watch the full video. This um, uh, subject advisor is called Fotini. She's a fantastic subject advisor and she really explains the pet topic um, fantastically. Okay, so please watch this um, tutorial. Well, not really a tutorial, but this thorough discussion on the topic so that you know what you're going into um, regarding this pet. Now, um, I'm going to show you a quick example of phase one and what you actually want to aim for at the end of phase one. So um, I've this isn't the exact uh, phase one that I got from my students, but I've amped it up a little bit um, and I'm going to show you an Afrikaans and an English version. So in phase one, you're looking at two folders, um, a research folder and then a word report that is um, that has quite a meaningful name. OK. Um, so in Afrikaans and in English. Inside the research folder, um, we want your sources. This uh, girl saved her sources in separate folders, not sure why, but we, we want those separate sources. Each source, um, you actually need to have worked in a little bit. So what I mean with worked in is actually have um, digested the source a bit. So you'll see she's made highlights. Um, of the sections that she was planning on using. And this really helps you while you're working with your source 
um, that you know what you want to use, what you've read, um, and what you're planning on uh, basing your questions on. Um, and then the same for the Afrikaans. Okay, let's just have a look at the rest of the folder structures. In phase two, we have a database spreadsheet uh, report and questionnaires in Afrikaans databases, Sigblad verslag in Frauleister. Um, and then in phase three, we have your final report and the website. Um, and please make sure that you actually name it properly. All right. Um, if it's still called phase one or faucet yen, um, then you're not going to get your mark. All right. Let's have a look at what phase one should contain and what it should look like when you're done with it. So I've already opened these in a fancy view that we can actually scroll with them together. Um, so I've got the English reports on the left hand side and the Afrikaans one on the right hand side. Um, I quite like to put in a custom um, picture uh, on the cover page for two reasons. There's a mark in phase three that says you've um, referred to uh, like there's an appropriate reference to outside uh, images. And this is just like the easiest way for me to get that mark. So. Um, I always ask the students to put in a, a, an external picture on the front page that matches the topic. Okay, so a nice site for looking at, for finding pictures like that is a site called Pixabay, or you can go and look at a site called FreePick. I'll put the names on the screen for you. Um, so those are some nice sites to go look at. And then just put in a caption um, and say, put the URL in of where you found that picture. Um, so you can so it's actually good to say from or fun um, that URL so that they know that is the source of the picture. Right, so we've got a cover page here. The title is uh, the title of the report is in the title uh, content control. Same over here. There's a subject um, content control or subtitle doesn't really matter, but the subject name is there. OK, um, there's a name and surname, so an author control for name and surname. There's a place to put the school name. Obviously, you have to put your own school name. I've just taken it out here. Um, I've used, uh, they've used the company content control. Um, and then there must be a place for the abstract. Even though in phase one, we haven't yet put it in, there must be a place for it already, just so that we don't forget to do it in phase three. Okay. Then we've got a page with um, just some headings that says table of contents, and that's a proper table of figures, the Belfon Fajira. Um, and then we've got a page with our introduction, task definition, focus question, and letting dog definition focus for all. Now, um, here, just so that you know, in the final phase, in phase three, we're just going to use this little bit of information in the top two questions, and um, the task definition heading is actually going to fall away. So, uh, um, we don't need to describe in our final um uh, report how we're actually going to do the pet. Okay, um, just so that you know here, you'll see where they discuss how they're going to do the pet. They actually clearly list every single step that they're going to do in each phase. So all the main steps in each phase has to be there. Then we've got a focus question. This is a very important one, a focus frog. Um, and that is the question that helps us focus our research and basically state our aim for this whole report. Okay, now it helps to know where we're going, hey? So um, this section wasn't actually necessary to go into such detail already, but a lot of the work is done for phase three now because we already had it. So technically, all you actually need to have here is this heading, discussion and analysis. All that you actually know about is bespreking and ontleering. But I find that it helps to actually know where we're going. So when you watch the video of the other lady who discusses the topic, you need to um, pay attention and already think of what three headings you're planning on um, actually uh, researching. Okay, what's the three subtopics you are researching? So this um, lady researched problems, statistics, and solutions. Um, the Afrikaanse vrouwkie het gaan soek achtergrond, probleem, um, gemeenskaps betrokkenheid. Uh, oh, in a book. Okay. Um, so uh, it's good to know where you're going because do you know where they got all this information? This information, um, this is the answer. Each 
Each paragraph is basically an answer to one of the research questions that we do in the table at the bottom. So all they did is they were just already copied and pasted it. They've already loaded their sources, so they've already put in um, citations. And now they like get more than half of the marks already for phase three. Okay, so this is just some work that's extra that helps to um, alleviate the burden in phase three. When I know all of you by then, um, you're busy with... Uh, like prelims and stuff so nobody wants to work hard then okay findings we've got nothing yet conclusion we've got nothing yet bibliography since you've already loaded the sources you can just put in your bibliography already easy easy okay then um oh and by the way they didn't actually happen to have exactly the same amount of information i had to shorten it so that we can scroll through them easily like this okay now um here we've got the uh, section that we call appendices okay of Baila in, in Afrikaans. Um, so uh, it's important that your appendices have like either a different header or like a different numbering style or like you'll see it's in a different, um, uh, the, this one is landscape and the top ones are portrait so that you can actually see it's a different section. That's very important. There's lots of marks um, allocated for that. Okay, so different numbers, different headings, something like that. Um, the first appendix is just a screenshot, uh, a few screenshots of your folder structure. Um, it doesn't have to look exactly like this, but I just think that looks nice when you've got three um, separate screenshots for each phase with a little arrow pointing to each one so that you know which one's which and grouped it nicely. Then it's uh, uh, one graphic that can be together. So that works out. That works well. Okay, then we've got um, addendum two. Uh, Bailach Twia. Um, it can have the word Bailach, it can have the word addendum, um, uh, or I think it's called addendum, yeah. it's appendices as a whole, but addendum 1, addendum 2, addendum 3. Um, so the source table, this is where your 10 questions um, go in, right? See, there are my 20, 10 questions, um, it goes over two pages. Um, and these answers, you'll see these categories are the headings that we used at the top, these ones, okay, statistics and solutions and problem, okay, so those categories become our headings, and these answers become the content under the headings. Do you see, it's good to know where we're going, it's good to know where we're going. Um, and there you just indicate what level the question is, where you got the um, information. All right, um, then, uh, below that, we're going to, I, I like doing the tables like this. You can do it differently. I'll show you the different options now. Um, then you list your three sources. Okay. So you put a screenshot of the source where you've already added it in your um, manage references. Um, and you do an evaluation of the source quality. So, gehaal te van die inlichting, een evaluatie om te sien, is die bron goed genoeg? Um, met de skermskoot van die bron, so, um, now, the one thing that I've um, not mentioned so far that's very important is when you're actually going to do your research and you think of your topic, you need to keep this um, in, in mind, the quality of the information. Remember, we're looking at five things here. Authority, currency, accuracy, objectivity, and coverage. Authority means it has to come from someone who knows what they're talking about. Okay, It can't just be a no-name blogger. Um, currency means... It has to be relatively recent. Um, it can't be like a five year ago article telling you how to keep yourself safe online because I'm sure that's not relevant anymore. Um, accuracy refers to how well it correlates with other sources. Um, because if you just have one source saying, uh, like making some or other claim, and it's not the same as everybody else in the world, then I can't really trust it. Objectivity means do they actually report objectively or do they have like some agenda? So you'll see these, I actually found one source that said the source is sponsored, like it's a sponsored article. And then you've got to be a little bit extra careful because a sponsored article means that company paid for it. So like you can generally usually trust what they say in the article if they're like just giving general security tips. But if they are giving you like a list of what's the top 10 um, services to use for uh, um, let's say uh, antivirus but they are the company paying for it then obviously you can't trust them then it's not objective okay and coverage is literally just a list of what the source covers 
um, wat hy dek, wat alles in die bron is. You can literally use the headings in the, in the source to list that. Okay, and then on the last page, we have the declaration, the verklaring, um, where you're going to fill in your own name, surname, your ID number, etc. And um, uh, you have to put in at the bottom here that you're watching my video guides and you're, you're getting class instruction from your own teacher. And then in phase three, you have to actually insert a picture that you scanned or that you took a photo of and maybe transferred by WhatsApp or by USB drive, like a um, whatever you do. Um, put a screenshot of your actual signature in here. Right, that's an overview of what we're looking for in phase um, one. So basically the only thing that's not required in phase one that they did extra is um, putting citations already and moving this information to the top here. Okay, but it's literally just having moved it. They didn't do anything else to it. Um, so this section isn't actually any extra work. It's like five minutes of work of literally just moving it here. But that I think saves a lot of time in the end. Oh, and doing the page numbers already. Um, I think that's a nice, uh, a nice thing to already have done. And then you get those marks in phase three. Okay, go ahead and watch the topic video now. Then you can decide what topic you're going to choose for this year.